Good afternoon, good evening, good uh, good morning, whatever time it is in your respective area. This is Show Off Your Gems. My name is Destroy, and I thank you everybody who has tuned into this show. Now, to give you guys some, some sense, I've been hitting up a lot of people uh, as far as artists and special guests. And it's been interesting because people have been like... It's a real format, and I'm really excited about it, uh, as hip-hop does win again. So salute to Bobito, uh, Ross, and everybody in here. Gina, you were supposed to come on in and show us something. We're looking forward to it. Jam, how you doing? AL, Seth, uh, everyone who's tuned in, we appreciate you guys rocking with us. And if you were here yesterday, I'm really happy that we got to get off the interview with Pete Rock. Um, but we're going to continue going right here. And if you guys... Know what's about to happen on today's show. I'm excited. You're excited. And it's so wild because I have so many questions for this dude. But it's all going to be in, in great nature and all, all positivity. And people have been asking me, like, yo, D, what's on your desk? What's the, what's, what do you have on there? Uh, I just want to say thank you for this. Now the highlight of my day. I appreciate that. And everyone who has something nice to say. I appreciate that greatly. I, I screenshot a lot of positive uh, energy you guys sent towards the show and, and, and how it's been dope and all that stuff. And I appreciate that. And it keeps us going because I'm doing this for our culture. But people have been asking me about the photo. And I want to show you this photo. J. Rue, come and send a request. And we're going to get into this. You guys see who that is? Here we go. All right, coming on right now, we're going to have none other than East New York's own, uh, a great individual, hungry and determined to be great. What's up, young man? He's trying to figure out how to work. Yo, I'm trying to turn my camera around. <laughs> Hold up, yeah. <laughs> Let him do what he's doing. I want to give everybody an opportunity right here, right now, to send uh, a request to your homies, to have them come in and join the show and watch J. Ru and I as we talk some great uh, hip-hop and we see some amazing gems as he goes through his, uh, his items. Now, first and foremost, uh, J. Ru, let me know when you're situated and then we'll get it going. All right, I, I'm good now. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Uh, you look amazing, bro. First and foremost, I'm really happy to see you. Uh, thank you're you. You're great. Always. You know what it is. You know I stay positive, D. Last time I saw you, we was in Columbia. What are the odds that two two dudes from the crack era of Brooklyn were hanging out in Columbia, but hip hop made it happen, right? Yeah. And it was crazy too. It was crazy. So, uh, J Ru, it's, it, it's an honor to have you here. This is show off your gems. Not only are we, you're going to be dropping gems, but you're also going to be showing us some gems. And, uh, I have a roll of these, uh, you know, from, you know, I have a couple of them that I still, I, I still have in the stash. Of course I got your wow. vinyl and stuff like that. But uh, when they were when they released uh, your first project on Payday, they had a soap associated to it, right? Right, right. The black soap. The black soap, and uh, so there was there was a beautiful time of 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 this era where there was all these promotional items, you know, and the black soap. Right, was right, like, right. It was like folklore, like bro. Right, yeah, that was my idea because I used to use it a lot. So I was like, yo, it'd be dope if we put the logo on it. It was actually the same. I was like, you know what? Let's put the logo on this. Come clean, you know. Let let's do that. Um, yeah, that's what's up. Those stickers that that took me back, and it's crazy because today is the uh twenty eighth, the first the the twenty eighth anniversary of the uh, daily operation album, which actually gave me my start. So, so you know, like I'm out, I'm out here in Germany. So like any memorabilia, most of the stuff I have is in my mom's basement back at the crib. But I got. I got two things, That's and cool. these things are uh, so they on, may be. Hold before you even go before you even run through that. Go ahead. So, um, you know, you're you're a young dude coming up, and uh, one one fact that I read, and and I've talked to you about it, but I want to, you know, and en entertain the people, is regarding uh you working, uh, at a fast food place at McDonald's, with who of the Wu Tang? Clan? Master Killer. So you Master Killer. That was back in, 
That had to be like 85, 84, something like that. We were kids, but I grew up, I grew up with a uh, master killer, Jamel. That's my brother. A lot of people don't know. I grew up with, I, I, I used to hang out with the, uh, RZA and Jizza before Wu-Tang Clan, before the, the RZA actually, the, when he came up with the concept, he shared it with us first. Like, we were some of the first dudes that he shared it with. It was uh, me, uh, True Master, Master Killer, my man Afu, my man Shay, uh, Sid, my man Asha. And he was like, yo, God, I'm saying I'm going to come with this cool and sit. You know, like, you know how he told me? <laughs> like, cause, and we was actually watching Shaolin versus Wu-Tang at the time. Okay. we used to watch Kung Fu movies together. We used to watch Kung Fu movies together. We used to sell books. I used to sell books. And uh, so if you ever go on, and right now, if you go to New York, if you go to the village in front of, I don't know if Urban Outfitters is still there, but there's some book tables out there. The first book table was ours. There was no book table there. It was me, True Master, my man, our fool, uh, and Master Killer used to come through, Jamel, the Jizza, uh, the Rizzo. We used to all hang out at the table and build, sell books. And then after we, used to, like, we, used to have, we used to do crazy stuff. And then during the week, we used to sell books on John Street in the village. And then, like, after we would collect the books and stuff, we would go, like, down to the pier in the summertime in the pier over there in Brooklyn, and uh, we would have kung fu fights and shit. <laughs> <laughs> we, would, we would make up styles and all that, yeah, you know. So those are brothers, like, Wu-Tang Clan, those are my brothers. It's uh, Master Killer, the Jizz and the Rizz especially, you know what I'm saying? Like, we spent a lot of time together in the 80s uh -huh. hanging out. Those are my, my true brothers. <laughs> That, that that's amazing. Now to go back, control the mic like Fidel Castro in Colombia. You told me something about your grandfather in Cuba. What, did, what was that? Word. My grandfather. A lot of people don't know that my grandfather was born in Cuba. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like my pa's name is Ricardo. My grandfather's name is Jose. Uh -huh. You know, um, como se dice? Eh, no que si uh, hablando español, pero you know. Estani Sangri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but, but Chica Solo, you saw, you saw when I was out there, I do my little thing. Yeah, I, you no, know, it's, I, it's, it's, it's not only appreciated, but it also is of the vernacular of the culture, the, the street you was raised in, you know, Brooklyn, you know, culture, right, you're I mean, so diverse. Right, and, and you know, and, and it's like this. I'm a hustler, you know what I'm saying, on, on, on so many different levels. Nothing negative, but in a positive way. So, you know, I'm going to speak whatever I'm at. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like my Spanish, for instance, it's like a gun. I pull it out when I need it. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Same with my German and everything. Like I, when I'm here, I use it out because, you know, you can have a great message. But if people can't understand you, then it's like not having nothing to say at all, you know? For sure. And uh, you're, you're, you're coming up, and we, you, you mentioned the daily operation 28 years ago. Uh, did, mm -hmm. did, did uh, you know, Guru and Premier meet you as an MC? Were you a homie that kind of became an MC? Well, I met, I met, now I've been an MC since, I've been an MC since I was born. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I was, this is something I was born to be. You know what I mean? And, um. I, I, like I said, I, I became an MC since I was born, and uh, I've been an MC since I was born. And what happened is, I knew a dude. See, I knew a dude in high school, my man Shad, and his cousin used to run with Goo before Premier came around. When, because you know, it's different incarnations of Gangstar. You know, of, of course, you have Big Shug and Guru who originally started the Gangstar, but then Shug got locked up. So Goo been doing his thing with a lot of different other dudes. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my man Tommy Hill from the East. We went to high school together. My man Dat and my man Gus, they started hanging out with, with Guru through my man Shad. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? That's where they met him, and they started hanging out with him. And that's how I came along and met the dude. But I never really hung with him or nothing like that. I started hanging out with them dudes after the Manifest video. So I guess that was 88, 89. Oh, yeah. You was, you was in it. You was in it for yeah, some I time. Was the, I, was, I, was, I, was in the, I was in the Manifest video, actually, like, a little chubby kid. I had a big flat top, an <laughs> uh, aqua shirt. I did a couple little one-two dance steps. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been rocking like I've been rocking for a while with 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 those dudes. Um, and you know, I've been like I said, I've been an MC because the, my first demo that I did was at Firehouse Studios, and PF Cutton produced it. Salute PF. Because uh, I knew PF, I knew PF for a long time, like back in the days, and like. The 70s, my mom used to work for his pops. His pops had an uh, Italian restaurant 
uh-huh. on Atlantic Avenue. It was named Leo. He had, he had pizzeria and Italian restaurant. My mom's <laughs> worked in an Italian restaurant. Uh, Leo's Pizzeria and Leo's Restaurant. On Atlantic, between, it was my block between Wyona and I think Bradford. Uh, I'm not sure the, the, the next block, but yeah. That's, that's, that's beautiful. So then, uh, I'm the man happens, uh, and, you know, when that happened, so I'm, I'm coming up with Tony at this time while he's doing mixtapes. Right. And, uh, you know, Daily Operation comes out and that specific song, because not only the variation of beats, but kind of like the way you just came in kind of, you almost, you, you rap like you was 20 foot tall. You know what I mean? And it was, it was, it was. Um, I, that beat was sick. I mean, one, like I remember the, the, you know, cause I was hanging around for years. Like I said, if you, if you, from the time I was hanging out to the time I got my first time to rhyme on the album was at least four years, five years. It seemed like but now that I look back in time, it seemed like it took forever. And I admire you know that. Like, I admire seemed, that. It seemed, it seemed like it took forever, you know, but I just played my position. A lot of people didn't even know that I could rhyme uh-huh. outside the crew. If you was outside the crew or you, was out, you didn't know that I could rhyme. Now, you- because, you know, we from, we from a different era, you know. Now it's the show me everything era. You know what I'm saying? But um, when, when, when I was coming up, Process. you didn't talk too much about nothing you did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just did it because you, you never knew, you know, no disrespect to, to anybody today or the youth or anything, but I mean, they're a little bit cotton now. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? They're, they're a little bit softer than we were. Now, you know, did you, we grew up in a, in a rougher time. Did you? Uh, mm. n- nothing like the crack era, bro. It's, <laughs> it, was, it was very I mean, tough. Listen, it was so funny that I, I saw something that you said, and um, when they was first talking about the corona and all that shit. And, and, and after that, I said that same shit to somebody a couple of days. I was like, yo, I grew up in East New York in 1985. Corona should be scared of me, yo. I was telling <laughs> Juju that. She was like, come on, man. Corona, come on. <laughs> the shit we live through, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm damned if I'm going to be taken out by the corona. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It ain't, you know, I mean, I think it's much easier to put fear in people nowadays yes, because we was living and, and, in a constant and, and state I, of fear. And I admire it <laughs> and I'm okay with that, but this is, I try to keep this like free of, of any negative, you know, that energy. So we, Dig can, it. You, you know how, how, Dig how we it. get down. Uh, MC name. Did you have another MC name other than J. Ru the damager? I was just, I was just J. Ru. That's it. Like I, I never really had a, a cool MC name and I, and I I was I always mean, just Jay Ru is, I, mean, I like I know, my name. I know it's the real name. I, I, like, I like my name. Right. I like my name. So, and you know, it, it, I used to write graffiti as well. Beautiful. And, um, you know, and I had a name, one of my graffiti names was Exile. And I used to show my mom's, my, 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 my pieces and stuff. You know, I was young. And she's like, but why do you want to be an exile? She's like, why don't you call yourself like king or conqueror or something like that. She's like, call yourself something positive. You don't want to be an exile. You know what an exile is, right? So, like, that's one thing. My mom, she always encouraged me to, to she always encouraged us, me and my sister, everybody in my family, just to be more of claim things that you want to be. You know what I'm saying? That claim what you are. Don't, don't claim negative stuff. She never let us claim negativity. So you come out and you, uh, you tell me you, you, you dabbled in dancing in the music, the manifest video, uh, Exile. Well, I'm nice for popping and all that. Yeah, yeah. No, but this is this is. <laughs> I found out was the time, yo, D. For you real? know what I'm saying? It's like this is true. See, this is the difference. This is the difference between now and then, and, and everybody has their saying the difference between now and then. But what I'm saying is this: rap and everything is so huge now, right? That people imitate the art. When we was growing up, it was the art imitating life. Uh huh. Now it's, it's life imitating art. When we was growing up, it was, it was the art imitating our daily lives. You was going finding refrigerator boxes and bringing. We was playing in the junkyards and all of that shit. Now, you know, so. now when you talk about art imitating life, what's wild about Daniel Hastings' choices, Wrath of the Math album cover pretty much looks like the Con Edison explosion in New York City last year and Sunrises in the East has like the World similarity <laughs> of, 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 right. of that. Um, you know, I once, I, I once did a post comparing the, the both album covers, but um, 
What was that vision of, of both, and is it just coincidence? Well, you know, this is, is it, I mean, I guess you could say it's a coincidence, but, you know, I'm an artistic individual. Like, I love, I love art. I love photography. I'm a photographer as well. I'm, I'm a budding filmmaker. You know, I, I shoot my own videos and all that type of stuff. So, you know, whenever, whenever anything you saw that had to do with me, that represented me, I had some, some type of input in it. That I always sat down and, and kicked it with the guy who's doing it. Like, for instance, with the first album cover, they had hired somebody else to do the album cover. I fired that person and got Daniel because I had met Daniel on the photo shoot with Guru and those dudes. So, and, and we had started talking, and we was cool and all that stuff, and he was telling me, you know, he's Panamanian. I got cousins from Panama and all that. And we just talk, he was just, Daniel, you know Daniel. Yeah. He's just a cool dude, a cool, real dude. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so we sat down and we talked about it. He was like, yo, the sunrise in the east, and we start talking, and he's like, what's your vision? Because that's the type of photography he is. He never, that's why all his photo, his covers look so unique. And that's what it is about any good artist, no matter what you do, whether it's, it's rhyming, whatever, if you're not having feedback into that part, it's like, for instance, with Premier. Premier never just came and threw you a beat. It, it wasn't like that with us. Right. We would sit down, he'd be like, yo, come on, and we would listen to things. And, and then when we found something that he, you found something that you liked, he'd be like, what about that? What? And then he would hook it up and put his thing on it so that it always had your essence inside. Because it wasn't just something, of course, if he gave you something, you're going to jump on it. But that's just not the process right, right, right. that we went through when, when he did it. He, he made sure that you liked it because he know you had the rhyme on it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and a lot of people don't, a lot of people think that they'd be like, oh, they think that Preen just threw us beat. Nah, we sat down and we, he, let, he let you hear a bunch of stuff. Yeah, before he, he before had the record. What it was. Yeah. He would have mad records. That's the old digging thing. And he would just be playing the records. He'd be like, yo, like, for I'm the man. He was like, yo, I got an idea for this thing. And he let me hear that. Boom, 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 boom. I was like, oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. And he was like, yo, yo I'm going to hook it up. And that's all he would always say. He's going to hook it up. And for, and for Come Clean, he had the drums first. He, 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 let me have, he let me hear the drums first. He like, yo, come by my crib. And we're going to listen to some records. Uh -huh. And we start listening. And we listened to about, I guess, five records. Because we didn't make it past. Once we got to that record, and it was all that noise, we just looked at each other like, yo. <laughs> he like, yo, you want me to loop it like this or you want me to loop it like that? I'm like, yo, loop it like that. Uh -huh. And he's like, all right. And he's like, all right, I'm going to hook it up. He put it a little bit. And then he just sent me home with it. I wrote the rhyme right in the, in the whip. My man, wrong whip. You know? But like I said, you know, Prem is a genius. And... And I think the true genius of it is he, the thing that he would fill you out. Yeah. He would like, a lot of people don't know that, you know, people talk about the greatest albums. And I was in the studio when a lot of the greatest albums were, were, were done. I was in the studio when Nas did Illmatic. It used to be me, Prem, and Nas. Prem used to come to scoop me up. I used to roll the blunts. Nas would write the rhymes, Prem, and he, and, and the way Prem worked, it wasn't like he would come with beats. He would work on shit right there. It would you be you be in the kitchen uh -huh. while we cooking. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. He cooking up the he cooking up the beats. Now I'm cooking up the rounds. I'm rolling up the blunt. So it was always that process where it was so much of you in what in he real did time because in he, real he, time. Right, he did that. You understand what I'm saying? He pulled you into it. It wasn't just the thing. So you felt so much part of the process. That that's why you got into it so so hard. You know what I'm saying? So you so so you come out and you recently did uh, the NPR, and I just want to tell people to go and check right, out the home the, the home joint. Yeah, yeah that, that that was really dope. Uh, if you could give me the timeline uh, for what I'm about to, to get into, uh, what is your relation to Ten Crack Commandments? Um, I actually did a joint for Angie Martinez. When she had the hot five at nine. Right. And 10 Crack Commandments, the beat for 10 Crack Commandments was the beat for the hot five at nine. Right. And the only version that's available that's on YouTube, unfortunately, has me yelling at Black because Premier plays it on a show that he was my guest <laughs> on. So it's, it's hilarious. However, I, 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 you know what? When I go back to the crib, I'm going to send you a version. I got the clean version. 
You know what I'm saying? That is I got a, that, the, I got the clean gem version. That makes my hip hop hair stand up. I think I was like, it's the caliente. Yeah. Cinco a la nueve. Or <laughs> some shit. With nah, 97. It. With Angie Martinez. Who said? Like, yeah. And it was, and then, and you know, that's why a lot of people, and this is another thing people get twisted. People think that I, I had something with Biggie. Okay, so now like there is a photo. There is a photo with Biggie wearing a jersey with your J. Ru the Damager shirt under it. Uh -huh. I'm sure you've seen it. Right. I, I was told, I think, that he also was running, which he opened for Yarn a couple of a couple of times for you. Yeah, that was my man. Big was, listen, Big was my man. We used to smoke weed together on the porch and all around the corner. Right. I know my first apartment. My first apartment, uh, uh, um, Rick. The dude Rick, his 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 brother, who used to run with Junior Mafia, his brother was my landlord. Like, see Kim, I used to hang out with Kim. Used to be in the studio with us all the time. Biggie was my man. Like the whole thing when I did the one day thing, I wasn't even thinking about him, but it just came off yeah, that way because I, I was in school. You and know it, what I'm saying? It almost felt. And, and Prima tell you that, so it it got a little. It got a little misconstrued, right? But we, but, we you know, I was, I was actually upset at Puffy. As a, as a <laughs> hip hop fan, we appreciated that a yin and and a yang could exist, you know, and that's how right. we were looking at it. Like in our coming up, we were we had Dela and we had Onyx. I'm not saying they were going at each other. Right. It was just two different types of right. greatness. It's two, it's, it, we had all types of different things. And this is what, and this is what, and this is for all these so-called fans and these young people and stuff like that. Remember this: I was saying motherfuckers' names. Uh huh. You did. If I if I was coming at you, I was saying your name. So if I didn't say your name, then I wasn't talking to you. We from that era. I don't. I'm not gonna pussyfoot around it. I'm gonna say your name. Uh -huh. You, 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 and that's what it was. So I never said her name because it wasn't about. It wasn't had nothing to do with Junior Mafia. Even even like. Uh, and like I said, Preem will tell you this too, the beat for playing yourself. Preem had already, we had already did that. Then we was like, oh, shit, niggas did that. You know what I'm saying? So oh, it, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. It was just it was, time. It was COVID. So, but I mean, it was what it was. I was a little mad at Puffy at the time because I was childish, so that's why I said his name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because of the little situation that, and it was nothing. And you know what? And. And as I look back... In retrospect, but this I is was, why this is great. I was a child. Yeah. I was a child. Yeah. You know, a lot of things about my life, it, I was a child. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Even, even, even how I was coming with certain things, I was never lying. I was never, I was never telling lies. I was never misleading. But the way that I was doing it, I could have done it more effectively. But now, because I was a child, and, 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 I, and I call that the, uh, the arrogance of ignorance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's youth. Mm -hmm. When you think you know everything, but when you don't really know shit, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like I said, I was on the right course, but that's why I said my new joint, a little knowledge could be dangerous. That's how the saying goes. But I wasn't mature enough. For the things that I was trying to do, I wasn't mature enough because I, I had too much of that East New York still in me. You know what I'm saying? Now, like, nowadays, I deal, I deal, with, I deal with the highest form of understanding, and that's love. You know what I'm saying? Love is understanding elevated. So I could see things the way I couldn't see things before. And you upset, right? Like, you, you, you grew up in the hood. You, you know what it is. You upset. You get treated bad. You get treated hurt. You see all the injustice that's done to our people uh -huh. and all that. And you mad. You know what I'm saying? You, you mad. You, you, but there's so many different ways to handle that. See, we don't realize that we becoming them. And you can't win like that. Like, if we play in chess and we both make the exact same moves, nobody's going to win. It's going to be a stalemate. And, and, <laughs> and someone who was always, uh, I mean, I became, so I was, I grew up a fan of the Buffalo Bills when it became to football. So right. they never won anything as far, they never won the Super Bowl, right? And then, I, right. I, I, then you know, with hip hop, everything that, that I was like super passionate about wasn't getting that light that I wanted it to get. Um, right. Your, your your stance, if I can say that, at that mm -hmm. time, it it empowered me the same way Chub Rock dissing drug dealers on his album uh, on the shoutouts. It empowered right. me to believe that that wasn't the way, that wasn't the only way it could be. You understand what I mean? Right. And I appreciated right. that. But um, this is show off your gems, and we doing you doing a lot of dropping the gems, 
and a lot, and I appreciate. Always, you. all my gyms are mental. I show those off on the daily, but <laughs> we want to. See, we won't, I got two things. Go. I got two things, and these two things only probably a few people got. It's it's rarer than rare. All right. Number one, we talk about the the twenty eighth anniversary of a uh, daily operation. The first tour I ever went on. <laughs> 1992, EPMD, Gangstar was opening up for EPMD. If you could put it closer. The Daily, so Operation, could... album, the Daily Operation album just dropped. Uh, and this is the first tour. This is my first time I ever went on tour. Oh, wait, this is the first K-Solo time I did. and Dr. Fex? It was an EPMD tour with oh, K-Solo, Dr. Neck? Fex, <laughs> Redman. Show us. Rocking it. Like, I really want to see it. Because I see the other logo. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And hold on, hold on, hold on. What? All right. So, this is the first ever tour that I went on. Can you see it? Yeah, Schumer. That was the management for EPMD back in the day, 1992. This is the first time we went on this tour. And check it out. The day, that, the day that this tour started, EPMD was shooting a headbanger video. It was raining like crazy. We were in a van. It was me, Dap, Shug, uh, Gordon, Guru, and Premier. And we got in a van, and we went to the EPMD video. We talked to those brothers for a minute, and then we, we went on the road, and we, we, started, we started ahead of them. Cause you know they was had fancy the tour buses and all yeah. of that. We had we had the custom van from Van Tastics. I think the name was the spot. <laughs> and um and that's the first tour that I ever went on. That's the first time I got to do I'm the Man. Um, that's when that's when my my chick game just went to a whole nother level. <laughs> uh, my boosting game was crazy because we was in states with no alarms. Now, we would go you, to malls you, and you, just go take everything. <laughs> were you ever here? Because I, I, I was boosting, but out of curiosity, I had Thurston Howell on here, and I was talking about Macy's. Were you ever in it in th that much, or you was just uh, sticky fingers? I was just a thief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was just like, I would, every, any opportunity that, you know, we came up like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like... I went to Franklin K. Lane with all the dudes from from Cypress and, and Pink Houses yep. and all Little Tut and all of them dudes. <laughs> we was in high school together, you know, so everything I did was a crime based. You know what I'm saying? Like you had to do that to survive. It wasn't it wasn't like um it wasn't an option. You know what I'm saying? So uh I'm not sure if you've seen this. I have posted this, and I'm only showing okay. this again because it, it has to do with Gangstar. And this is mm -hmm. this is a, a real Metro card. Um, and, right. And in the back is the Gangstar Moment of Truth uh, advertisement yep. that they went on it. That's when they started doing that. Word. And it, it, it was, it was mind-blowing. Um, but, you know, things like this is like, you know, it's, it's, it's priceless. And um, you know, a gem like your 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 laminate that, and I know you must have so many because you've you've. I got I got I got millions of laminates, but this is the first one. That's beautiful. This is the the first. This is the first real one that um, like I said, it's, so it's the death is the hit squad. It was a hit squad. Who's and on death that tour? Nineteen ninety-two. All the artists. So so it was a uh, Dos Effects, K Solo, Red Man, and Gangstar. <laughs> and uh Gangstar was Gangstar was opening up. Yeah. <laughs> right? So like um cuz EPMD they was and that's when Dr. Sex was like, you know, they was just breaking out here and Red Man all of that. So it was that was a crazy tour. We was at, we went that's like I said, this is the first official tissue tour where I was J Rue the damager. That's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Like where I came and I did I'm the man and it's funny when when Eric Simon he said and you know now, EPMD, people don't know this, EPMD is one of my favorite hip-hop groups of all time. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. Um, I went to Ashley High School with my man Jamel, Eric's cousin, and um, to Lane. Like I said, I went to Lane, so I went to a lot of dudes. And um, it's like this. 
I love EPMD. So to be on tour with EPMD was crazy. And then the fact that Eric Sermon came up to us, like, before the show, he's like, yo, you're going to do, the, the, do that on the man joint? And me and Sugar just looked like, oh, word, yeah, I'm going to do that joint, you know? And so, and, and it was, and when I would come out and, and he said, Jay, with the damage, do, 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 do. You know, that, this, this, this right here, this right here changed my life. You know, and it's, it's appropriate that it's all on this day. Like, it changed my life forever. Like, I'm sitting here in Berlin in my living room, you know, packing up because I, I feel like I'm, I'm going to move somewhere. I think I'm moving to the Netherlands. Yeah. So I'm already starting to pack up. I got my – y'all saw my apartment. I got my little boxing thing in the middle of the room. Uh -huh. You know, I got things all over. I'm packing up. But, um, you know, I'm in, I'm in Berlin. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, East New York, like you said, dude, from the crack era. I'm sitting in, in, in my living room in Berlin with my drum machines and, and, and all my stuff and, and I speak German and, and I, I go to the German store and, uh -huh. you know, thing and, and, and the crazy. So after this, after this, this date, we went on the European tour and that was me, that once again, Gordon, uh, Hood rats in Europe. Oh uh, <laughs> man, listen, I was getting anything that wasn't, that wasn't locked down my G. Yo, we was we would go to hotels, and you know how out here the hotels, like the smaller hotels at night, <laughs> there's no no reception. Yes, there's no some. We we was calling America on the phone <laughs> downstairs the, with the tape coming out. We ripping it off, thinking they can't see that any liquor that was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would leave hotels with twenty bottles of liquor. Everybody sitting jingling in their room, like. It, it was crazy. It was it was it was a, a it was a great time. It changed my life. So it changed my perspective on the world. You being you know? from Brooklyn, also talking about the early years of Wu Tang and prior to even Wu Tang existing. I've had several wonderful uh, encounters with Old Dirty Bastard, and I'm curious. Oh, that's my dude. If, that was my dude. I'm curious if you have any spectacular ODB stories, because he's one of those type of cats who who. Oh man, listen! I can tell you, I can tell you a min million different stories. I can tell you one time, cause I'm, I'm like, I had my record deal, all that. I never, ever was not J. Ru. I never was on no funny. You, you always catch me downtown Brooklyn, wherever. I still ride the train, all of that. My deal, whatever. I'd be on the train. I'd be. I, I ain't never been afraid. None of that. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I'm downtown one day. I'm going to Macy's. I see old dirty in front of Macy's. Uh, um, and shit. So, you know, we start talking. I'm like, yo, what you doing? He like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm taking applications from baby mamas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he had a pen and a paper. And he was actually asking chicks, you want to be my baby mama? Sign it right here. <laughs> give me your phone number. Yo, it was, it was real like that. You know, and then we used to, I used to see him all the time, him, Buddha Monk. We, that's when we used to hang out at the arena. We used to hang out at the arena. Yeah. And we used to go to Palladium. Right after the arena, because they wasn't too far. And so, but we used to always we used to be out late, because I didn't know bartender chick there. So, you know, we'd be in there. So, one night we was in there, we chilling. So, you know, old Dirty, I see him. He like, yo, God, got nominated for a Grammy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we like, we like, yo, so I be bugging, you know, <laughs> like, what do you mean you got nominated for a Grammy? We, we, don't, we think he just talking, you know what I'm saying? But that's one thing about old Dirty, he never just talked. Everything he said was real. Mm -hmm. Like, and if you knew him, you knew that. So we knew it was something, but we ain't like, we saying ain't get nominated for no grammar. Uh -huh. And then that night we went, and it, it's the joint of Mariah Carey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so like, like I said, is he and the way he said, because he be drunk, throwing 40s at cash. I've seen, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've witnessed a lot of amazing things with that human being. I've seen him just bust out freestyle in the middle of clubs, get mad, low on the ground. I've seen him do it at Broadway you Junction know? at 7 a.m. Wilding. I, I've so the Mar Mar Mariah Carey uh, music video, he had the record label. Uh, give him ten thousand dollars to purchase because he said it was for items he has to purchase to wear in the music video. Right. Um, he said a, a rep from Mariah's uh, camp went to the went shopping with him, and he bought like uh, traveling trunks. He bought like his wife, his family stuff. <laughs> they said when he showed up to the video, he didn't even have any clothes. 
he was like, yo, I need clothes. <laughs> but he was, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I, you know, I, I, he was amazing. A unique individual that, 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 you know, <laughs> that, that the world is going to miss. You know what I'm saying? Jay like Rudy. I said, I've, and I've run into him all types of times, all types of places. You know what I mean? And, and he's always the same, unapologetic. Yes. Old Dirty. Yes. And, and you know, and I want to give a shout out to his son, Young Dirty. Yes. Yes. And, you know, actually, his family and, and the legacy that uh, Wu Tang is holding up is, is really nice. Yo, he, they, 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 that's, he's a spitting image. That's his reflection, like, right? Like, even when we got, we had a conversation out here in Berlin. Uh -huh. And I'm just looking at Jamel, like, yo. He's his father's son, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We actually, we actually did a record together. Uh -huh. That uh, the it's, it's uh, me, Young Dirty, Master Killer, and the RZA producer when we were out here in Berlin. I don't know what the RZA's doing with it now, but spectacular, you know. No, but that's that we that, recorded that, one night. But yeah, that was a, that was that was a good time. Right, like we, when brothers came out here. That's one thing I like about here because when everybody come out here, I get to see brothers. Right, right. You know what right. I'm saying? Because because I'm here, so and you know I get to, I could I could show brothers around. I could you need something. Trees, whatever I could maneuver, you know, like a make, Brooklyn make dude. that happen, right? <laughs> Restaurant, whatever. All right, you know. so you hit us with a gem, and we need to see that other gem, me. All right, so this is the this is the next one. Now, the reason that this one is crazy is because this is when it was it's truly official. This is the hard to earn tour, and this is the first time I was J. Ru the Damager, J. Ru the Damager. And on that, you see who headlining? Yeah. J. Ru the Damager, Nas, and M.O.P. Ooh. It was a hard to earn. So that was 1994. So that was two years later. So, so, the, so the, the Sunrise in the East album had, came out in 93. It just came out. Um, actually, 94, right? The album came out. And this is when I was J. Ru the Damager. And this is, so this is, this is that first tour, you know, and after this, when we went on tour, I had my own. We was on the bus. Yeah. You know, it was it was it was like that. Like that was, the, and that was the craziest tour that I ever. It was two tours that I went on that were nuts. The the, the uh, tour with um, Gangstar it was me. Gangstar, uh, that was the hard to earn tour. My man MC Mello uh -huh. from uh, London. My man Jonesy D, DJ Pogo. We did a tour and a tour I did with the Roots. Uh. The next year, in 95 and 96, those are the craziest tours I went on in my life. So many memories. and um, But, yeah, so that, so those are two, two laminates because those are, like, the first. You know what I'm saying? That's, like, when I was J. Rude the Damager. Like, the first one was I was just still sidekick. Yeah, yeah, J. yeah. J. Rude the Damager, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure and it out. And then the next one, it was, like, I had my own yeah, move. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that was a crazy tour, too. That, that was a crazy tour. Like, shout out to my brother's M.O.P. Like, smart, even M.O.P. Like, I met, I met them dudes before preeminent. I met Billy on the train. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I met Billy on, I met Billy on a, the C train. I was on Rockaway. I was, I was coming national because I was still in the East. So I jumped on the train at Liberty. I'm going through. And uh, Rockaway, I see two brothers get on. It was, uh, it was Billy and what's his name? Boom Bang. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, R.I.P. And um and, and 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 Billy, he's looking at me. You know what I'm saying? And like you know, and then was those days. You know what I'm saying? Like, it dudes could go looking anyway. at me. So you know, and then <laughs> then he start coming towards me. So I stand up like, yo, what's up? He like, yo, you J with the damage? I'm like, yeah, what's up? He like, yo, I'm Billy Dancer and OP. I'm like, oh shit, what's up? You know, when we start kicking it, <laughs> and then uh. And then when Gangstar was getting ready to do, because they they got that deal. This is for the first tour when they got that deal on um on on you know on EMI for the daily operations joint. And they was doing the tour. And they was like, "Yo, who should we bring with us?" And I was like, "Yo, bring MOP." Me and Dad was like, "Yo, we gotta bring MOP. Yo, they BK right there. Like that, that was BK. I was like, "Yo, that that's BK. Gotta take it. Gotta bring MOP." And Preem reached out to Lays, and the rest is history. So now, you know what I'm so like, now, so now you're here in these in these present times, and what what I want you to kind of like, uh, you know, before you you break on out, just like what keeps that battery full in your back. You are someone who who you know me and you, funny enough, in Colombia at the end of everything, we're just sitting in the lobby building about like 
you know, the spirit of this staying hype and being, and you know, and, and just <laughs> right. like making everything, working the angles. What keeps you fired up, um, you know, to continue at, at, at the pace that you do? First things first, you know what I'm saying? I woke up. I got all my fingers, eyes, ears, and toes, and I'm in control of all my mental fac mm -hmm. faculty. That's number one. Number two, I wasn't built to give up. I'm not where I want to be yet. No matter what, no matter what I've done in life, I'm, I, have I have different visions for myself. See, and no matter what other people's visions are, what other people, because people like to keep you in the past. Yes. They like to keep you somewhere else. And yeah, that's great. I love all the stuff that I did. I, I love that. I appreciate it. And I'm glad that I live from it. But I'm constantly moving on to the future. And I, I have a lot of skills and I have a lot of ambition. And like I said, I have a lot of things I want to do. And, and I wasn't built. I wasn't built to quit. I was built to reach <laughs> my goals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, was, I was born in East New York. And, 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 and like you said, we came in. Listen, it's mad dudes that they didn't make it. Uh -huh. They didn't make it. I done been stabbed. I done been all types, everything. Beat, beat up bad, uh -huh. 50, 60 dudes. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I done, I done, I done caught it by D sets, all types of things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I, I done, I done, I done, a dude, one time a dude had me under pressure. This dude from the hood, he put a gun in my face, pulled the trigger. Shot my man Jerry, shot it didn't go off. What? You know what I'm saying? And I still press him. So, so I wasn't built. I've been through all of that. I'm not built to. I'm I'm built to last. I'm a, I'm a, a OG. I'm built to last. I'm not built to quit. And that's all it is. As do things go all my way all the time? Not at all. Have I been beaten down and, and knocked down and all that? Yes, sir. But I'm gonna get up every single time. I'm gonna get up every single time. I'm just unless I just can't get up. You know what I'm saying? I ride till the wheels fall off, the engine drop out. And I'm going to just grab that motherfucker and pull. Because, you know what I'm saying, it, 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 this is what life is for, you know? And, and that's how I feel. I'm exploring. I'm so blessed. I've gotten to see so many things and, and, and so many, many people. And, and I've met people all over the world. I've been all over the world. I'm a dude. I know dudes who's still on the same corner. I can go to the hood right now. Yeah. It's dudes that's on the same exact corner right now. Right. And haven't been anywhere. I've done all types of things. I've done things that people, I'm 49 years old. I've done things that people save up for their whole life. They haven't been to, to one of the places I've been. I got six passports. My passport got filled up six times. <laughs> so I'm blessed. I'm going to keep it moving. And, and, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it pushing. And, and if you, and, and whoever, and this goes for whoever, whoever out there, if once you quit, it's over. And that's the thing. I'm not quitting. I'm always, you know, I play this game called Lumosity. And I, and, I, and I suggest this for all people out there, especially you home now. Go online. It's called Lumosity. Uh -huh. it's, it's a brain game. Yeah, it helps yeah. you sharpen, sharpen your mental skills. And at the end of these games, I've been playing it for years now, they evaluate you. And what my, I have the highest points in is problem solving. I was meant to solve problems. We grew up in problems. Yeah. You got to get around that. Like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I look at something and be like, okay, how do I get from here to there? Because you, you know, you had to know how to move. We was, we was living in a place that was kind of like the demilitarized zone. Like, you walk the wrong place, you step on the landmine, get your arm blown off, and, get your leg blown off. And you, you know and, what I'm saying? So you, you had to be able to maneuver through that. And you're here, J. Rue, and, and I got to tell you, um, you know, I admire it, and I'm sure everybody here are. You know, we are salute. We salute you, and um, you know, I love you because you're someone who empowered me. Uh, you know, with with, right. with the theme well, music, thank you, brother. and 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 that was that that has been great. And to be able to, you know, to do that 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 one time in Colombia was an honor. Uh, you know, for that as well. That was a great time too. We had a lot of fun. That's the show was crazy too. I mean, you Shout know, out to the beating us crazy ass Juju. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, My brother. So I got to So, J. Rue, thank you. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, continue to be amazing. Continue to inspire us. And continue thank to be you, a world you. traveler, bro. Well, and tell everybody out there while I'm here, I got to go to my website, yes. com. I got my new music coming. And, like, the, the future is going to be amazing, man. And, and, and I've, been, I've been training for this my whole life. And that's why this whole social distancing, this is a reset for me. I've been practicing for this for years. I've been social distancing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I always rolled dolo. Uh -huh. So, you know, but like I said, 
DJ, thanks for having me, brother. Peace, love, light. You know what I'm saying? You're one of the real ones. You know I know you for years, and, and we always run into each other, and we always have a great conversation because we always have things to talk about, and, it, and it's, it's always different things. It's not just the same thing. We always talk about different things. It's not like, oh, we talk about. So, you know, like I said, and it's real, you're a real brother. That's why as soon as you hit me up, I'm like, you know what? I'll do it. I don't be really wanting to do shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah. <laughs> but you hit me, I'm like, I, we good. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. It's all good. Thank you, So Jimmy. that's what's up, D. Word up. Everybody, follow him there. I destroy. If you're not, <laughs> funny guy. He's one of them Latinos that he <laughs> likes to call himself so much, you know. Uh, I, 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 appreciate and, uh, <laughs> I appreciate it greatly. And I want, I want to encourage everyone. He's got T-shirts. He's got hats. He's got socks. He's got hoodies. He's got all types of stuff on that website. That and most of all, you know what? Uh, and most of all, D, I, I got some jewels for you up here. So get the music. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and listen, because, you know, I'm coming out of this. I want to start a new movement. I want us to really realize, like, look around what's happening now. Look, look where all the turn up money holding dudes is at right now. They bunkered down and they don't got nothing for none of y'all. Uh -huh. They ain't got no message. <laughs> they don't got nothing. Where brothers like destroy, he like, all right, boom, I got to do something for the people. Come on, let's rock. We doing stuff for the people. So, so I want y'all to realize that who y'all leadership is, who who y'all heroes are when you when you when you out there. So y'all looking up to them dudes in the club. The club is dead. Yeah. Everything, all that's dead. You can't go shot. You can't do none of that. Yeah. Look, you know, know who, know who your leaders are. Know who the brothers is who's going to help your community grow and help us as people. We, we got to start loving each other as people and, and get to that higher plane so that we get off of this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? For sure. But anyway, that's enough of that. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm hungry now. It's like 2 in the morning. One yes. love. I see you later. Right now is everybody who's watching opportunity to send a request and we can see your gems. Salute to J. J Ruta Damager. We appreciate you and we love you and I love you. Thank you so much. Uh, I want Thank you, bro. someone send a request right now. Uh, J. Ruth, hit that. I'm out. Send that uh, X and then yep. we're going to get to the next head right here. This is Show Off Your Gems. My name is Destroy and we're going to pick the next individual. I want everyone who is here Get your stuff together every weekday, 7 p.m. All right, next up, I have uh, coming up right here. I, I, did I? Next up is uh, Puerto Rico Rob, a great human being, a friend. And somebody whose collection is super respectable. Zenobia, I try to grab yours. Hold on. So now we're waiting for, uh, for, for the next person to come on here. So once again, that was beautiful. It's connecting. And this is my homegirl, uh, Zenobia Simmons, who is in here. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> What are you doing? What the hell are Yo, we looking at? What is I this? Don't trap house? Put me on TV like that. You don't even tell, okay? <laughs> Ew! Look, I'm cooking. I'm cooking dinner and shit. <laughs> Ew, D. Look, I got all my fixes. Hi, Zeno. Hi, uh, everybody. Destroy. So got me on blast. What's up? Uh, no, I, so you sent the request. I thought you was ready to I, show. Yo, I I was not okay. So what what are we what are we doing? Since you gotta so be you know out here doing, now, man. no what? fucking makeup. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> let's let's you know go. What, Zeno, let's go. If you if if you want to come on another day when you're ready with your good. No. Nope. You... Fuck that. I'm back. Can I cuss? <laughs> not in America. So to, all right. To, I'll, so Zenobia, uh, what you need? Hold on. So everyone is watching. <laughs> Zenobia Simmons is a beautiful human being who I met in my years as a rollerblader in my biker shorts, and she was like, <laughs> "You should rap and release records." And then she actually was the arsonist publicist that made it possible for us to be in a lot of great things. Now, yep. you wasn't only yep. working with us; you also worked with Noriega. Um, yep. And, and and there's a list of everyone that I'm sure you, you can name. Long list. Long, Long list. list. And remember, I even managed the arsonist. 
Wait a <laughs> we all went overseas, and we, we are, are we going to talk about that or no? <laughs> That was, that was crazy. But but you got you you guys were awesome though. You guys were one of my favorite groups to ever manage. It was so, I listen, love you guys. You're, you're, you're being very nice, but one of the gems <laughs> I got I got from you and your homegirls. I remember one time you was like, he's acting very mail room. You was talking about somebody else. <laughs> no, because not you. Your, no, I your know, friend. I know. I I, I you, was one you of know. The girls. I was one of the women in the day. I was like, oh, yeah, girl. yo. You so I, but I learned, I learned like as far as how to carry myself from that because I'm, I'm like in the back, like, oh, word, that's how they perceive that. And I'm here yeah. trying, to, trying to matter. And I'm like, okay. That was being know. great. Yeah, because you can't be, you know, just hold on. See, look, I'm cooking up. What are you doing? What are we doing? We're in state. somebody's house. Zeno, I'm trying to run the show off show here. Listen. Okay, my fault. Favorite. I'll be very professional tell, now. Tell Hold on. Man, let me let me go into my hip hop room. <laughs> let me turn my, my shit off so it don't burn. I need your guy. I need All right, let guy. me go into my let me go in my hip hop room. So we can we can see some of my some of my gems. Hey everybody, you guys. <laughs> Destroy, <laughs> this is one of the re many reasons I love you. So should I start? I'm gonna start with my pictures first. Go. Cool. All right. So if you guys can see, let me try to do it so you can see it right. You have to turn okay. it around. Can you turn the camera around so we can see? I I can. Let's let's do that. Hold on. <laughs> but then I want to make sure I'm seeing it right. So hold on. Yeah. So can you see it? This is you got the KRS. Oh yes. Boom. Oh, that's the autograph photo. The the, the that he used to autograph, right? Yeah. Yup. Yep, yep. Keep going. So we got this is kind of high. Can you see up this high? Yep. It, you gotta about, bend you it. it turn it more up. Oh, hold on. Like that? Yeah, there you go. Okay, who's that? Ahmad. Remember from oh, back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah. With, uh, <laughs> autograph. Keep Bust on. it. <laughs> Scarface. Yeah. In the house. Autograph. The green eyed bandit. Autograph. Sermon. Eric Sermon. Okay, these are not autographed, but they're also dope. Yeah, but they're beautiful. We got the the uh, an old OG Snoop Dogg with the Death Row logo in the corner. Woo! You see it? Yes. Can you see it? Okay. Then we move it over here. We got Nas. Uh-huh. Looking looking fresh. Okay, we're coming over some more. We got volume 10. Pistol grip, oh. <laughs> it will left at all times. Okay, this is this is R and B. It's Anthony Hamilton. Uh huh. That's all. This is R and B too, but it's D'Angelo. Right. Come on, that's amazing. Yeah, of course, you know what? You see, one time, remember the in stores? You see the little D'Angelo posters in the background? Yeah. <laughs> then we got my homie Joey Crack in the house. And then one of my, my gems, a true gem right here. Run DMC. Wow. Right? Of course. How dope. Then it gets better though. Fight dog. Oh, that's so beautiful, Zeno. Right? That's that's when that's when we were in LA. It was a pro like he had this 12-inch record called Bend Over. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, when I was doing the ra I was doing the PR and the radio run with him with Crystal, with my homegirl. That this is this is kind of R and B, but still honorary. Chico the Barge. Ooh, that Chico. Year. Chico. Trying to that was the year to some Chico music. Right, right. That album when that album came out. Oh my God, amazing. And then we got the Wu Tang. Oh, you got the. Look with the loud, the loud logo and shit, and the, and the old RCA logo. Yeah, hit them hearts. Hit them. And then we got me and Naughty by Nature. Yeah. Classic. All right, and then hold on. Now we're moving over to the to the other one. Damn, I gotta see. Let me see if I can get this wall good. This wall is pretty dope. And all the pictures on this one are taken by Arnold Turner. We gotta give a shout out to Arnold Turner. So hold on, I'm trying to do it so you can see okay, it. Okay, do your thing. Okay, so 
Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so it's us. Uh, all right. Craig Mack and Jamie Foxx. Damn it. Jamie Foxx got the feel sweatsuit on. <laughs> she said the feel of. Feel of sweatshirt. Remember those hats? Yo, the Zeno, let me ask you everybody? a question. Are you turning yeah. the camera around? Turn what? It, oh, turn, turn it, it like this? No. <laughs> <laughs> You got you can what? I need I need, I need your assistance. And I'm no, just there's a button that turns it to the other side. Oh, you like that? There you yeah. now I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Destroy is saving lives out here. Help okay. your girl. Now give it. To okay, us. that's better. <laughs> All right. Craig. <laughs> so it's Craig Mack and Jamie Foxx. Beautiful. Craig Mack again. And this is, both of these are at, um, let me try to get it better. Oh, this is that House of Blues. Wow. In LA. Then we got my gym over here. Snoop and Biggie. Okay, now you're you're turning the camera, but you need okay, to go. Okay, <laughs> Better. <laughs> Yo, you can Cino, see it now, you right? You had a phone in your in your life. You just had a beef. I don't. I hate all this. I don't ever. I never do. This is my first one, Destroy. This is my first IG live. I ban Zoom in my house. I don't fuck with that. I hate that shit. <laughs> you know, we, we don't, I don't like people to know what I'm seeing in my shit. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Okay, so that, I love that picture. That is so, so dope. Fire. And now, this is all the same night. So then we got Biggie nice. performing nice. on the stage. One of his first West Coast appearances. Biggie and, Biggie and Puffy. Woo. Right? And then we got Biggie and Puffy on stage again. Woo! And then this one is so crazy. Because look, it's Biggie, Puffy, and flex Fuck. and um what's dude's name you remember the dude he was from uh that's i think it was was it hits no he him he was from nah, I, don't, he was I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who he is he's lee kadena okay lee kadena <laughs> but look look at look at biggie's face though yep how you but, get how you get that on release i ain't even released it how'd you get it <laughs> <laughs> right and then we'll move over here the greatest day in hip hop history. Uh, yes. Give it to Zenobia Simmons. Beautiful. By Double XL. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> That's dope. And then, wait, I got more. Hold on, let me try to do it so that uh, it's not too crazy. Okay, hold on. So, come, ride, take the ride with me, real quick. It'll you be got, worth it. You got it. two okay. minutes. Okay, we got Little Kim. At the VMAs, two thousand. Uh huh. Boom! See that that was a, that was so dope. I actually went that year. It was that was so much fun. All right, and then we got Michael. You see it? Yeah, Michael Burnett Bib. <laughs> Michael Benavid. <laughs> but no, Benavid, I'm just playing. No, it's Michael Benavid. But the beauty of that, you see the towers. The towers like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a hip hop photographer. <laughs> so he did a bunch of stuff with um he did a bunch of look, that's Mob Deep. Nice. Yep, and then that's the same series. Cause that and that, they're both puffy. Like that and that. Cause he did a bunch of stuff for Bad Boy. Oh, I understand. But he, yeah, but he was also, you know, the homie. So he was the photographer. Stop, move Sadie. Sadie's, look, Sadie's trying to get in your hair. Sadie's hip hop. Oh, show off your dog. What Sadie up? Sadie is hip hop. <laughs> MC Sadie. Okay, wait. And then, what do I have? Damn, James. Okay. Then we got Confessions of a Beat Junkie. Yes. Produced oh, yes. by Prince Paul. <laughs> you know what that, like, the, remember the Casingles? Yes. This is an official Casingle. Casingle, check that out. The Casingle <laughs> is popping. And then, damn, I had one more really good one that I was gonna show you. Uh, I don't know what dirty it is. Less than I don't know what it is. Seconds. One more, wait, one more hot fire. Oh, it, here it is. Hold on, I gotta turn the light on. Paper magazine cover. Little Kim, hardcore. It was a cover story. 
Little Kim and Bell Hooks. Yo, how dope is that? <laughs> that was one of my favorite album covers. Zeno like, is just counting the whole down. Street. I love you. Show off your gems. I love you too.